United Nations Security Council is set to hold an emergency meeting tonight on Gaza. It's at the request of the United Arab Emirates. Abu Dhabi is seeking a binding resolution demanding that Israel accept a humanitarian pause to the fighting. The UAE is an ally of Israel. It's also one of the only Arab states to have condemned Hamas and to have demanded an immediate return to the hostages. We're joining us now uh, from Abu Dhabi. Loai Al-Sharif is a peace activist and an expert in Arab-Israeli relations. Good to have you with us, Loai. It's been a while. Good to see you again. Um, the UAE, as I, as I pointed out, is one of Israel's strongest allies in the region. Um, it's no secret, though, this war has put a strain on uh, Israel's um, partnerships in the region. Talk us through the UAE's stance. So the, uh, first of all, hello, Laura. Um, I hope you and the people of Israel are holding up. And uh, I hope that this war ends the right way with the end of what really started this war. So I just want to say that the UAE stance, the official stance of the UAE is um, working towards um, uh, a humanitarian ceasefire, a ceasefire that would allow humanitarian aid to get into Gaza. Um, the, um, the official stance of the UAE, Laura, is to help the Palestinians as people and differentiate between Palestinian as people and Hamas. Now, you have to know that there is a big campaign happening in the UAE called in Arabic, Tarahum in Ajal Gaza, or Sympathize with Gaza, where uh, hundreds of, of the UAE citizens and residents contribute to send humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza. But don't forget, Laura, that it's the only Arab state that explicitly condemned Hamas for its barbaric and heinous crimes on October 7th. And this is why I always have to tell my Israeli and, and Western friends to manage their expectations when it comes to the when it comes to the UAE. So you have to know that uh, it shows great support for the Palestinian people. It said the uh, Her Excellency Rima Al Hashimi from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. She said that uh, the UAE stands with the Palestinian people, stands with the Palestinian cause, and rejects the collective punishment on the people of Gaza. But at the same time. The UAE condemns and and calls the crimes, calls what Hamas did on October 7th, heinous and barbaric crimes. And this is something that is mm. unique when it comes to the efforts. Absolutely. Well, and, and of course, um, Israel fully supports efforts to get humanitarian aid to uh, the innocent civilians in Gaza. Israel's uh, uh, concern is when it comes to aid falling into the hands of the, of the Hamas terrorists. So certainly no one would criticize the UAE for, for being at the forefront of, of, of raising uh, aid efforts. Um, but what do you think longer term, Lawai? Do you think that this will inevitably harm cooperation uh, between the UAE and Israel? I don't think so. I, I think in the long run, when this war ends, inshallah, everything will reconcile. The Arab and Israeli relations will reconcile. Muslim and Jewish relations will reconcile. Uh, you know, you know, Laura, people deep down, uh, decision makers and people who are wise enough in the Gulf, they know that this war is ugly. This war is unnecessary. This war could have been avoided. This war sparked when um, Hamas militants uh, broke into Israel, mass murdered uh, 1,400 uh, uh, innocent people and civilians. And to be very honest, this war uh, wasn't really, there is no purpose for this war. And and if you, if you noticed, Laura, um, a couple of weeks before this war, a couple of days even before this war, Saudi Arabia was talking about normalizing relations with Israel, and the Crown Prince was talking about bringing uh, uh, concessions to the Palestinians. So everyone was working towards uh, a betterment uh, for the Palestinians, but unfortunately Hamas blew it up. I personally believe that the two-state solution is, is dead. Its death certificate was signed on October 7th. That's my personal opinion. But I believe in the long run when this war ends, things will reconcile in the Middle East because the future of this region, Laura, the future of our region is stability, thriving, and prosperity. And we cannot allow those who believe in, in bloodshed to win. Allah, they will not win.
And, and Lawai, of course, you've always been an advocate for cooperation between Jews and Muslims. Uh, you speak Arabic and Hebrew, of course. You, you, you know, you, you've read uh, so much about the issue. You really are a scholar on, on uh, Jewish and uh, Islamic history. Um, we've seen a, a, a real spike in anti-Semitic incidents and attacks around the world. Um, what, what do you think can be done about that, particularly in the Arab world? Very unfortunate, but what needs to be done about it is education. You need to teach people more about um, the commonalities between Jews and Muslims. I always say this, Laura, by the way, I understand where these people come from because one day I was in their shoe. I was raised this way to be anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic, or standing against the Jews. But you know, when, when you get to know the Jews, when you get to know Judaism, when you when you educate yourself, you would really change. So education is the key. Education is a very important thing to to play. And now, the, uh, at this difficult time at war, people are on the edge. They don't really want to accept uh, hearing this or that. So let's just hope that when this war ends, inshallah, ends the right way, ends in a way that October seventh couldn't uh, wouldn't be repeated. Ends in a way that would. Uh, bring peace and calm to the region ends in a way that Arabs and Israelis build this region together. Muslims and Jews and Christians and other minorities also build this region together, inshallah. I believe with education, we can change people's hearts and minds and peace will prevail, Laura. I'm very optimistic. I know it's very it's very hard to say this in this tough time, but I'm very optimistic. And, uh, and in this tough time, Laura, if we don't speak up the truth, if we don't stand against the power of darkness, if we don't stand with the power of light, then we don't have the right to speak in the easy times. We speak in the difficult times. It's not about standing with Israel. It's about standing with humanity versus extremism, fundamentalism, and terrorism. Well, I meant to that, Loai. Wise words as always. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Loai Al-Sharif there. Thank you, Laura.